one of the main criticisms of test-driven development or trying to get 100% test coverage is that you start testing for things that may not have much value. For example, you might want to test whether or not a property getter and setter is working correctly. There's really not much value in doing this and that a lot of times code templates can make this very easy to implement as well as with C Sharp, if you're using shorthand property notation, a lot of the runtime takes care of uh, any setting or retrieving of local fields. However, with Xamarin Forms, it is extremely important that setters of properties and view models dispatch a property change event. Without this event, the Xamarin Forms UI or user interface won't know that it needs to update itself. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can test for not only property change events, but events in general. So one of the first things I need to do is update our user authentication view model to implement the interface of iNotifyPropertyChange. And this is the event that Xamarin Forms UI elements listen to to update themselves. And I'm gonna add a default handler here just in case nothing's listening to it. I don't blow a runtime error when I dispatch this. Once I have that, the next thing we need to do is go into our test and make sure that we write a test that looks for this property changed event. So I want to say public void test property setters dispatch changed dispatch property changed event. And we need some parameters here. All right, so here again, I'm going to instantiate our view model. And I want to create a string that says prop name that changed, or name of prop that changed. We're going to set this to an empty string. And then we're going to add an event handler, property change. And I'll clean this up a little bit here. And then we're going to say name of property changed equals E. I got to import property change events, property name, like so. And now when we specify our email address. We should be able to say name of prop that change should equal email address. And if we run this, it should work. Oh, we forgot to our test attribute. And now when we run this, we should get a fail because we always want our um, code, our test code to fail first. So let's make this work. So we're going to go into our property. I'm going to create a private reference to this variable. Return email address. And then we're going to say email address equals value. And then we're going to say property changed. This is the sender. And we're going to say new property change event args. And then we're going to say email address. Okay. And now when we run our tests, we get a green check mark, which makes us very happy. One of the reasons this is doubly critical in this particular case is that we want to make sure that whenever email address changes, we also dispatch a change event for email is valid because email is valid is based on the value of email address. And so I'm going to add another check here. And I want to say email is valid. 
So now when we run this, we're still gonna get a failure because we're always overriding the last name of the property. So we should probably change this to a, a list. So I wanna change, let's say list string props change equals new list. Import this. Now we're going to just push the property. And now we can say should contain. And voila, we now have passing tests and we're able to check for more than one property changed at a time. So as you can see, sometimes even testing that a property change event has been fired in a setter has a lot of value and is somewhat critical to our Xamarin.Forms applications.